Hello, I think I am live. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Cassandra. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Um, today is a live stream, my very first YouTube live stream about life at Yale, any Yale related questions that you have. This is more for um, admitted students um, slash people who are just curious about what my life has Yale at Yale has been like. Um, so please keep your questions limited to that. And yeah, drop them in the chat and I will get to them one by one. Um, so let's do it. So a little bit about me first. Um, I am a junior at Yale. I'm in the residential college Ezra Stiles and I am a double major in theater studies and ethnicity, race and migration. Um, I'm very involved in theater slash dance at Yale, also very involved in Christian life. So you can ask specifics about that um, and I'll go through your questions. Amazing. Okay, so yeah, is this gonna be an hour long? Yes, it will be about an hour long. Um, do I pick my roommates at Yale? Um, okay, so for the first year coming into Yale, you are pretty much randomized into one of the 14 residential colleges. Um, and you are also randomized with a roommate. Of course, you fill out a housing form um, where you can sort of rate your preferences. You can let them know that, oh, you are a heavy sleeper or you like to sleep really, really late, you know, things like that to make, um, accommodations for living situations and Yale will do its best to try to pair you with someone with a similar like living style. Um, and that's pretty much as as much as you can choose a roommate in this in that sense coming into Yale. But after that, after your first year, then you get to choose who you house with. So I had a lovely roommate, um, Catherine. Uh, we were put together in styles my freshman year in a double. And then towards the end of freshman year, I got to choose who I wanted to live with for the next year. So we went for a suite um, and Catherine and I decided to stay together again for the second year as roommates. Um, next year, we will also be living together, which is really exciting. Um, we have a suite, a suite of five singles. So we're suite mates, not roommates next year, but I'm still in very much close proximity with her. Love her to death. She is such a talented, wonderful person. Honestly, like Yale killed it in putting us together. Um, yeah, we have very similar like living styles and she's just like one of the most accommodating people I know. So. I wish that you may be as lucky as I was <laughs> when when you get your roommate. In high school, let's see, nope. Does Yale offer financial aid opportunities for overseas students? Um, I don't know the details about this, but I do know that the answer is yes. Um, and I would encourage you to check out their website because I, I don't wanna give you wrong information, but yeah, definitely look into that. Um, and I'm, I'm sure it is out there. Okay. Ooh, what do you think is the most challenging thing to get used to at Yale? Honestly, I think this, this answer isn't really specific to Yale. I think it's specific to college life in general, but because a lot of Yale like social life um, does surround like extracurriculars. Um, that's something that, that get, gets a little bit taking used to. Um, for example, like in high school, there's a clear delineation between when you come home versus like when you're at school, but in college, this experience is all like mashed into one. So I think something I struggled a little bit with in my first year was kind of adapting to that, that a lot of like Clubs, for example, have meetings at night um, simply because in the daytime there's we have classes. Um, so it's just adapting to like a different schedule and a different like pace of life um, in terms of like balancing socials, extracurriculars, classes. Do I have a favorite residential college? Of course I do. It's mine. Um, I'm part of the residential college, Ezra Styles. What a wonderful community and honestly, like the best facilities, truly. Um, we have like the a gorgeous, gorgeous dining hall. So we actually share our dining hall with like our sister college, Morse. Um, and that means it's 
the seating area is like twice as large. Um, the food that they produce is like twice as big as a, a normal residential dining hall. Um, there is like, a, uh, I don't know what you call it, a stone oven, a, br a brick oven for pizza. So every day there's like freshly made pizza, like right in front of your eyes. It's, it's amazing. Um, let's see what else. We have an awesome, awesome theater. One of the theaters that the floor is like, sp it's springboarded. So it's a really popular venue for dancers, especially. Um, speaking of dancing, our dance room is awesome and I use it all the time. Truly a safe haven. Um, Styles mascot is the moose. So yeah, we just, we have a chant that I can't say here on YouTube. So I guess you'll have to find out what it is when you come to Yale. Um, if you're part of Styles. Um, yeah, I have a newfound love for moose and have been collecting a lot of moose stickers over my Yale career. Um, love Styles. The courtyard is really, really cute as well. Campus culture. Something that the websites won't tell you. Interesting. I mean, I I don't know how like interesting this is to you, but something you do come across, and I came across this um, prior to committing to Yale, is like people describing the atmosphere as like very supportive and like loving and collaborative, and. Honestly, you guys, like, I really do think that's true. As cheesy as it sounds, I really do think that's true. Um, Yale culture is very highly productive. Like, there's always a ton of things going on, and people are, are very, very busy with a lot of different extracurriculars. But, like, they're doing it because they're passionate about it, and so supportive of others as well like when you're in those communities together when you're in like extracurriculars like planning different events like that passion and excitement is is palpable i think um so yeah i, I think i really do think it is like collaborative in the sense of i mean especially for me right like i'm i'm an artist some of you might know that um and theater at its core is very collaborative. Um, so yeah, I, I would say that people are out there, like they have your back. Um, I was a little bit worried about going to college so far away from home and I have an upcoming blog piece talking about this. Um, like my parents were probably more worried than I was. I mean, fair, right? Like who's going to help me move in, who's gonna who's gonna bring me homemade cookies when I'm feeling homesick, who's gonna bring me medicine when I'm actually sick. Um, but I realized that like the Yale community steps in to fill those roles, like all of those roles. Um, I've had strangers, like just people I did not know just come up to me and like help me move like giant suitcases up and down like five flights of stairs. Yeah, I lived on the fifth floor my first year. It was a lot. Um, and, you know, friends who will, like, bake me cookies when I'm sad or bring me medicine when I'm sick. Like, my friends and community have really stepped up to, like, become those, like, roles that family would normally play. So I think that's pretty unique and interesting thing about Yale. Okay. Um... Ooh, this chat is popping. What? Are students typically satisfied with the residential college that they are placed in? That's a really good question. Um, generally, yes. I would say like a good majority choose to stay in the residential college they're, they're put into. Um, you do have the option in between years to uh, transfer to a different residential college. Mostly the reasons for that is like your friend group, most of your friend group resides in another college. So you just want to be closer to them next year. That's like the most popular reason. I don't know if there are that many students who transfer because of like facilities, because generally across the board, like each residential college is pretty balanced in terms of facilities. 
Um, one more thing is that like residential colleges are not split up by personality. Um, it's not like there's one house that's like artsier or like this one's like sciencey. Mm -mm. It's all just like Yale likes to say this a lot, little microcosms of like the greater Yale. So it's like Yale, but then like a smaller part of that it's still very representative in its diversity. Um, so yeah, there's not really a, a major reason why students would like want to transfer to another residential college. Good question. What do I study at Yale? Um, I am a theater studies uh, double major with ethnicity, race, and migration. Um, theater studies is pretty self-explanatory. Um, ethnicity, race, and migration needs a little more <laughs> explanation. Uh, basically, it's it's Yale's version of like ethnic studies program. Um, it's relatively new. It was only started like 20 years ago, um, and this has been like a very student driven program as in the reason why it was turned into like an official major was because students were like this program, this type of education is important and we want it. And within the last few years, it's been like the fastest growing major at Yale. Um, really phenomenal professors. Uh, some of the classes that I've taken um, just have given me like the vocab to talk about issues that are very near and dear to my heart. Um, I can finally figure out how to articulate and know the meaning of terms like settler colonialism and all of these like big ideas that I've really never had the chance to encounter before. I mean, I've, I've known it in a sense, like I, I've known that these issues and these problems of the world and these ideas exist, but experientially in that sense. But now I have like the words and the writing power to like put it down on paper. I did not apply to Yale early. Do I compare my grades to my classmates or other students? Not really. Like there, there is not really like a culture of like going around and like asking people like, hey, what you get on, on X, Y, and Z or like what's your overall GPA? I rarely have those conversations. Um, yeah, only if, if people are like stressed out and want to talk about it, that's like the only time it really comes up. But there's there's not a lot of like poking your nose into other people's business. Yeah. How do I balance school and my Christian life? Yeah, this was something that I was kind of worried about um, prior to going to Yale, just because I didn't know like what it's like to be a Christian in, in a in a college setting, especially at a place like Yale. Um, I would say like the community that I found surpassed all my expectations. I honestly thought that it would be really difficult being Christian at Yale, but actually like with the support of this like student ministry and like other ministries on campus and just finding people who are Christians, um, honestly like I find it a lot easier to be a Christian at Yale than I did um, before, like in high school. And my personal relationship with God has like grown exponentially because of, um, you know, these supportive communities who have really pushed me to seek God um, and we seek God together. Um, so in terms of like on a day to day basis, um, Christian ministries have like weekly large group meetings and then also smaller group meetings like Bible course studies with people in your grade usually. Um, our ministry also does like prayer pods. I know some other groups call them like God pods. It just goes by various different names um, where we just like gather and like share with each other what's going on in our lives and pray for each other has been really uplifting. And yeah, so that's, it's, it's actually fairly easy to balance. Um, these two things like intersect quite a lot. Could I talk about my first year, my experience as a first year liaison for cultural groups? Absolutely, yes. So I was, I applied to be a first year liaison, we call them FLs, um, for this cultural group called uh, CASA, the Chinese American Students Association. And yeah, so I was one of five that year, and 
essentially like we just got to help out with all the various different events so i'm my guess is a lot of cultural groups run like this it's not exactly the same this one's specific to casa but we had like for example two social chairs and two political chairs and two cultural chairs and just like different chairs like that and as an fl i had the opportunity to work on all different types of events so whether it was like planning like um logistics for a uh, a politician coming to speak with us or um, making boba for like, like little, we put people in like families. So like, like a, a junior and a senior and a sophomore and a freshman as a family, we would like make boba for them. Um, we would plan mooncake festivals. Yeah, it's just pretty cool being an FL cause you do get like a broad overview of like all the different type of events. And um, I know for CASA, uh, the tradition is the FLs come together and like plan their own event at the very end of the semester. So our our event at the end was a calligraphy night, which is super fun. We asked one of the professors who teaches Chinese and also does calligraphy to come and do like little master sessions for students. So throughout the night, like students just came in and out and like left with these like beautiful hand painted um, Chinese characters that they could hang in their dorms. So that was our first year event. And then after being an FL, I wanted to be the cultural chair. So I ran for that position. Um, I got it. And that was really fun. Um, got to organize like the cultural show in my spring of first year and the cultural show is just like a great little showcase of various like talented people we had magic we had cooking we had jump roping really insane things it was it was awesome and really fun so that was a little bit of my experience with CASA what field of study is Yale known for okay I think there's like a right answer for this which I think you can Google. Um, I believe that it is econ. I don't know. Don't quote me on this because I'm not entirely sure. I think the fact, though, that I don't know entirely like what Yale is like super known for is is actually like it says something about the school because a lot of my friends are just in various fields of study. Um, it's not like I happen to know more people in like one program than the other they're pretty spread out i know people a lot of people in both stem and the humanities so yeah i would say it's a it's a huge variety at least from the people i know approximately how many percent of the students are international students that's a google question <laughs> if you find the answer you can type in the chat um Does Yale have biomedical engineering? I am not equipped to answer this, but I believe the answer is yes. That sounds familiar and sounds like one of the majors that one of my friends is majoring in. So I would venture to say yes. If not, then something very similar. What is one unique thing about Yale and what is one thing that I would change? I like that your place into a residential college upon entering. I know that a few other colleges like that only happens in your sophomore year. Um, yeah, I like it because from the start, you already have like a community to like call home, even if you're not physically living on the residential on the residential campus college yet. Um, you know who like your dean of college will is you know who the head of college is two very important people in your life um plus they live on the residential college near you like my dean was not my next door neighbor but essentially i lived at the bottom of like this tower and she lived at the top so she would like pass me as i was like going in between my room and the bathroom um yeah and it just it just makes it really feels like a family, you know, when you have such close access to professors and faculty member and dean of deans and heads of colleges. What is one thing I would change? I'm going to sit on that and I'll come back to that. Is Yale elitist? Not in my experience. I mean, I think 
I've gotten this question a few times. And honestly, I can say that like the people that I know and love and encountered for the most part are like the opposite of elitists. In fact, a lot of them are first gen low income students. Um, maybe that's just a unique experience to me, but like speaking from my point of view, I've never really had like that elitist like moment or or that you like see in, in mainstream media and, and stuff. Um, I, I know for a fact that there are certain students at Yale who do fit into that category, but they are like in the minority, like majority of people that I know are good and kind and loving and so like not elitist that, yeah, they just, they, they're not the type of people to like toot their own horns at all. I have a few international friends. This question is asking, is international community in Yale strong? Do Americans treat international students equally? Or are they kind of segregated? I'm not an international student. I'm American. So I, I, from my point of view, it's pretty equal. It doesn't seem like segregated to me. Um, the only thing that I will say is that like, there are like, extracurricular clubs that are dedicated for international students. And I wouldn't call that segregation. It's just that they have like, you know, the, the, for those people who like join those clubs and like really enjoy them, like they found a home in that community, which is like awesome. But like on a day-to-day -day basis, like people that I'm friends with or in my classes or extracurriculars, I don't really see a lot of segregation. Can I read my essays? If you look at my channel, I do have a, a video where I do read some of my essays, so go ch check that out. Um, so business slash finance really opportunities at Yale. My knowledge of this is limited, but I will say uh, Yale's one of like Yale's graduate schools, School of Management. Undergraduates have a have the opportunity to take classes at the School of Management. It's for short, we call it SOM. It's this giant, gorgeous glass building. Um, and yeah, I know people, a few of my friends have taken classes there. So that opportunity to take classes at grad schools is pretty cool. Um, and that doesn't just extend to like business slash finances. It also goes to um, like School of Drama, I, I have the opportunity to take classes there or School of Forestry or the Divinity School. Um, yeah, there's just so much opportunity for undergraduates even. Halloween tradition. Um, so one of the residential colleges, Pearson, has this like dance on Halloween, Pearson Inferno, I think that's what it was called. It's been a while, I haven't been to a Yale Halloween for a while, but that's like the biggest um, Yale like sponsored um, tradition of, of, the, of that night. Everyone goes in their costumes. Um, I believe it's called Inferno because like it takes place in the Pearson dining hall and like literally you step in and you feel the heat because that's how jam-packed it is with like people dancing in crazy costumes. Um, a lot of fun, but also like can be very suffocating. So stay hydrated if you go and go, go on the little earlier side before it fills up. Oh, another Halloween tradition, or at least something that I've been to is one of the, the, um, the houses, frat houses um, does like an escape room and they like turn their they turn different levels of their house into like four different escape rooms. So I've done one in like the basement with like a live actor who like was playing dead and then like woke up at one point during the escape room. Um, really innovative, like truly very creative stuff. There was another one that I've heard of that I was too scared to do, which is like it themed and like someone dressed up as like Pennywise was like hiding in the closet and scared the shit out of so many kids. Um, so that's, that's another fun thing um, that happens on Yale's campus during Halloween. This will be uploaded later, so no worries there. How does the theater studies major work? Is it better to have more prior experience? So you don't need to have any sort of experience to become a theater studies major. All you need is 
passion and to complete your prerequisites um, to fulfill the, the major. Um, for me, in terms of like taking certain classes, like upper level classes do require like auditions or prerequisites that you take like the intro levels, like there are, there are upper level classes for acting, um, for singing, um, more like skill-based classes you do need to audition for, but generally like our program is, is pretty small and intimate. So um, it's not a lot of like pressure to audition. Uh, if you're on good terms, if you get to know the professor, like shoot them an email, it's likely you, you can get in if you are a theater studies major. Um, in terms of like theater broadly, more broadly at Yale, um, you don't need any experience to do theater at Yale. Uh, you don't need any credentials, whatever. You don't even need to be a theater studies major to take part of theater at Yale. Um, even theater studies department, like department backed productions, such as people's senior thesis, like they cast actors who are not theater studies majors. Um, and I didn't, for example, like for me, the most experience that I had before coming to Yale was through playwriting, but I haven't really had the experience to act until I got to Yale. Um, but that didn't count against me. Like I still landed roles and like created opportunities for myself where I did get to go on stage and act. And it is very, very fun. A little intimidating, but very fun. It's a great question. How did I get admitted to the directed studies program? So normally, um, for those of you who don't know, directed studies is like this program you do in your first year. It's totally optional. Um, you apply into it, that's how most students do it. Um, it is basically, you, you cover the, what is considered like the Western canon, debatable, I know what that actually means, but it goes from um, like chronologically. So you start, you know, Aristotle, Plato, and you move all the way to modern thinkers and it covers literature, philosophy, and history. So three of your, however many classes you take are set for your first year at Yale. Um, I was actually invited into the program, so I guess the the admissions office or people who run the directed studies program read my application and thought that, huh, this girl might be a good match for our program and invited me to join. So I decided to join and no regrets because that program has made me into like an incredibly stronger writer. Like just, I improved so much that first year. I'm not saying it was not easy. It was it was very difficult, um, but wow, like I improved a ton from that program. So highly recommend um, uh, applying if, if, you, if that sounds like something you're interested in. A lot of students who are like primarily interested in humanities will go for it, but there are a few like STEM majors who, who wanted to do DS. How's the breakdancing community at Yale? Um, I know that there is like a group called Yale Breakers and they performed for CASA's cultural show my first year uh, and they were pretty fire. So I would say they're they're like pretty awesome. And if you look for them, they are certainly there. Um, I can talk about like dance community at Yale, uh, the greater dance community. Um, essentially, I'm part of two dance groups, Dance Works and Movement. Dance Works is Yale's non-audition um, gr dance group. So it's like the biggest dance group on campus. It's lottery based. Um, you just like a apply, you submit application for whatever um, dances that you want to join, and then they'll inform you if you got in or not, just based on lottery system. Movement is K-pop and urban, so joys of my life. Am I still studying creative writing at Yale? Are there special creative writing groups I am in? So I'm not part of any creative writing groups at the moment, although there are plenty of them. Um, my friend was is like editor of a lit mag called Hippo. There are a lot of spoken word groups out there. Um, yeah, for I did take creative writing classes at Yale, um, even though I'm not like an English major. So one of them I took last year, it was um, poetry, a poetry class with Claudia Rankin. And that was just mind blowing. Um, mostly were like English students in that class. Um, it felt so good to be back in a workshop style class. I had so missed that since high school. In high school, I had like amazing workshop groups and like my friends would like read my stuff all the time and give feedback. So I really missed that. Um, and I found my found my place again um, in, in, in 
Professor Rankin's class um, that semester. And what is so cool is that like the poetry that I produced in that class, I've been sending out to like various lit mags, just like on a whim, you know, I submit to like a ton and I forget about it. And like, now they're still like, they're still being published. And it's, it's just like mind blowing and crazy. So that class has, was amazing. Um, the same semester, I also took advanced playwriting workshop with Dar Donald Margulies, who, if you don't know him, he's like an award-winning playwright, Pulitzer Prize winner, um, super experienced. And that class was six students. So <laughs> that meant every week, and it was like three hours every week. So we had to bring in pages and pages every single week to be workshopped, which is like really a grind. Um, and our final project for that class was like a full length play. And the full length play in one semester is a lot for me. And maybe it's a piece of cake to some of you, but it's a lot, <laughs> it's a lot for me. But I was really proud of that. I finished something from beginning to end. So that that was a really cool like creative writing class I took at Yale. Hopefully I can take more in the future. I know like a few other ones that a lot of my friends have been taking. One is called Daily Themes. That one's like a really huge class at Yale. It's a lecture style. And basically the premise is every day you are given a theme and you have to write like at least 300 words every day. I think you take a break for Sundays or something like that. But by the end of the semester, you will have produced a lot of work. Granted, a lot of that work might be trash, but there are some gems in there. And I, I know a few of my friends who have been very inspired by that daily themes class, super popular. Um, other classes I want to take in the creative writing realm, um, screenwriting, I want to take screenwriting, that's for sure. Um, young adult novel writing, my friend's taking that, sounds super cool, super fun. Yeah, hopefully I still got one more year left. So hopefully I, I can squeeze those into my schedule. Do I still do journalism at Yale? Um, not really at the moment. Uh, most of my journalism opportunities are during the summer at the moment and I'm sort of pivoting into like the film and television world. Um, as for like journalism opportunities at Yale, I know that if you like complete a certain set of requirements, you do get like a, a special like award um, for this like journalism scholar program. Uh, more commonly, very popular is the YDN, the Yale Daily News, the oldest like collegiate campus uh, newspaper in America. And yeah, that a, a lot of friends write for that. Um, you can become like a staff reporter or you can do, be like a, a guest columnist. You can become an editor. There's a lot of different roles in that. And um, I know that editors like go on to write for the New York Times, the New Yorker. So if you're really interested in journalism, like definitely get involved with the YDN. Um, they will, they have like connections and their work is amazing. Really great student work. You can read some of them. I mean, YDN is totally free and it's all, all the pieces are online and the op-eds are really, really great. Really enjoy reading them, but yeah, stay updated on that. I would just open that every day. Yeah, the Yale K-pop dance group, sure. So Movement is um, started two years ago, still very, very new, but that just goes to show you how easy it is to like start a new club at Yale. Um, there's a lot of like funding and like opportunity for that. Um, but basically, yeah, we, we just do covers and um, sometimes we film those covers, uh, but most, most of the time, like the larger group is involved in um, putting up the spring and fall showcase. At the end of the semester, we have this giant showcase. Um, in between songs, there's usually like a little a little clip to facilitate transitions. Um, they're starting like a little wardrobe collection. So if you don't own like K-pop style like dance clothes, they're gonna start to like lend them out to people. And that, yeah, it's it's just so fun. Um, and oh, uh, in terms of like who's leading these dances, yeah, those are all student led. Um, students can sign up to choreograph a dance. Um, and I know students who are like super involved, like choreographing like three dances and like being in three other dances. So your amount of involvement with movement can vary significantly just based on what you want.
<sighs> okay, let's see. How's Yale's relationship with New Haven? Do students interact a lot with the surrounding environment? I think my answer will be a little bit different just based on like my major, ethnicity, race, migration. So just because that major, like the whole point of this major is to expand like our eyesight and, um, you know, see where the system is broken and think of ways of how to fix them. So just by that nature, like the friends that I have there are very much involved with New Haven um, and in like building or just feeling their responsibility and privilege as a Yale student and wanting to leverage that for for the for the outside community, for, for New Haven essentially, because um, we don't want to like have this attitude of like, oh, I'm just a visitor here. No, we wanna we wanna treat this like this is our community, this is our neighborhood, this is our home. And when you have that mindset, the way that you approach New Haven and see New Haven and talk about New Haven is going to be different than if you're like, oh, I'm just here for four years, I'm gonna dip. You know, so it's just yeah, the students that I have met are very thoughtful about the ways they interact with New Haven. Um whether it is like serving at like a homeless shelter or, um, you know, doing prison work or prison reform, um, protest work, activism uh, with surrounding uh, communities and act, uh, organizers in the community like that I see happen a lot. Um, so Yale's relationship in terms of like institutional wise, like that's something that students are always going to have to press forward for is to hold Yale accountable to the community, which is New Haven. We owe a lot to New Haven and our relationship shouldn't just be like, take, take, take. Um, so Yale students, Yale activists really push push forward um, a lot and, and keep Yale, the institution accountable. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what are the major resources and facilities, parentheses, research buildings that Yale has? Okay, Yale's, <laughs> there is an entire portion of Yale that I haven't really truly explored yet, known as Science Hill, because your girl's not really a science major. Uh, uh, but I have seen like the inside of some of these research buildings. And just from my like very limited nature of like what actually STEM is, um, these labs look pretty cool. So there are like quite a few different like research laboratories. I know this year they just opened a brand new one with an amazing cafe, which is which I have yet to go, but I will go. And once I go, I will tell you what this research building looks like, but definitely a lot of buildings there that I'm very unfamiliar with. Um, in terms of like other facilities, um, beautiful, gorgeous libraries. Um, you have the Beinecke, which I started spending um, a lot of time in this semester. The Beinecke is like, if you see in Yale photos, it's like a waffle shaped building. And it's the, it's the library for like, rare books and manuscripts. And they just have like the most like randomest, like wildest things there. Like one class, um, a class I was in earlier this semester took us to look at like original like Lewis and Clark papers. Like they have the entire like Lewis and Clark set of like journals or maps and manuscripts. Um, I went in there for my personal research for um, Jam Berry's collection. Like Yale has all of Jam Berry's letters and uh, but his handwriting was so hard to decipher anyways um they also have like the key that like england gave him to the kensington gardens like just wild super random collection which is super cool and very very accessible very easily accessible um we also have like sterling library we call them the stacks it's this like giant tower of like stacks and stacks of books pretty much um and beautiful study spaces. So the star reading room is like just gorgeous when the sun is like filtering in through the windows. It's too quiet for me to study in there. I prefer uh, places with a little more bustle. So I'm more likely to hit up like a cafe or like a common room, um, but beautiful libraries. Mm 
which are the extracurriculars available are those managed by professors or by other students? So most extracurriculars are student run. I don't know if, I don't know what ones would be run by professors. Yeah, it's most it's mostly student run. Um, and like literally there are so many extracurriculars available, like anything you can think about probably already exists. And if not, you can make it exist. Um, yeah, varied clubs from sports to like magic to um, music, a lot of music, uh, acapella, singing, dance, performance oriented, art, um, creative writing, just everything. Can you take a class or two at the law school? I would say yes. Um, as an undergraduate, I don't know like what are the requirements behind that, but I do know that it is possible. How does my sleep schedule differentiate or differ from my high school to college years? <laughs> um, okay, it took a little like self-discipline, but for the most part, it has remained, it has, it's gone, it's actually gotten better. Think about it. In high school, I had to wake up at like 6.20 um, because I had to commute to school. And then I would go to sleep around like, ideally around 11, but my guess is like a little bit past that. Um, in college, like this past semester, for a while, um, I was like super disciplined. I needed to wake up early to study. Um, so I would go to sleep at 1030 and wake up at 730, which is like so disciplined. But that only lasted for a short while. Normally, it's more like I go to sleep at like 1130 and I wake up at like eight. Yeah. So I actually get more sleep in college than I did in high school. And I look back on my high school self and I'm like, how did you, how did you do that? Um, did I apply to a specific college major when I submitted the application? I think I put probably like something like English and theater. So the fact that I'm not English and theater just tells you like, it's, Yale understands that you're gonna, you're likely to change your major and they make it really easy to do that. You don't have to commit, uh, announce your major, declare your major until the end of sophomore year. So you have plenty of time to like explore those options and like find where your true passions lie. And most likely it's gonna be like different than the one that you put down in your application. How is the food in Canvas for students? Honestly, I think you know, your food's actually really great. Um, not that I've like tasted a ton of other like schools food because why um but i think it's pretty good and generally like if you ask any yale student they'd be like yeah overall yale like we are blessed like we have great dining hall food Do I often leave campus to explore new haven slash other cities with my friends i go to new york quite often um yeah, I love going to see shows. Um, what So in college, most colleges I know have like a fall break um, and our fall break is like five days. So my first year fall break, I believe, I can't remember. Um, one of these fall breaks, I just decided to stay in New York with a friend and like go see shows every day. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Um, but even during a regular semester, like it's so easy to just like take a, take a day trip to New York. Um, yeah, I've gone by myself, I've gone with friends. It's just nice to get away sometimes. If I could repeat my freshman year, would I still do DS? Yes. I know that this isn't exactly, this might not be the advice you're looking for, but what advice would you give to someone who's struggling writing essays? Um, at Yale, like Yale understands that people are coming from various different backgrounds, right? And not everyone has been given the same blessings or opportunities. It's definitely not an even playing field upon entering. And, and they're aware of that. Professors are aware of that. So what I've seen is um, institutionally, like professors will grade your first paper, um, will make your first papers worth less and then increase as you go on towards uh, the semester so that they can judge it based off of like improvement. And then there are also like plenty of resources, like the writing center is one, you can make an appointment with a writing tutor and they'll help you think through your paper. I've had friends who 
who've done this, who've like entered in the meeting with like, I have no clue what I'm going to write about for this paper and enter and exit with like a fully fleshed out like outline. So that's a really helpful thing that Yale does. What is shopping period like? Who? <laughs> hmm. um, so shopping period, for those of you who don't know, it's uh, basically the first two weeks of every semester. You don't, for certain classes, you do have to pre-register, such as like language classes or like more technically based, like I guess creative writing classes I've had to register online for because um, they do need to see some of your previous work. Um, but Besides that, yeah, like none of your other classes are set in stone. So shopping period is a week where you just go and you drop in and out of any classes that seem interesting to you. Um, and then by the end of these two weeks, you should have like tasted a bit of like what all your classes are like, and then you can like commit um, and then your schedule is set. Um, something that does make shopping period a little bit tricky though is let's say you want to shop a class but you're like unsure whether or not you're actually going to end up taking it you can't just pop in for that first week and then like not come back the second week because that class like even though it's shopping period like professors have already started going over the material and you don't want to miss that so that can be a little bit tricky to balance during shopping period but overall like shopping period has been pretty positive it's stressful not gonna lie but it's pretty positive for me because i discovered classes that i like never would have considered otherwise like I would just like discover a class that morning and be like okay let me let me go in and see like what this class is about and then end up loving it um so actually it's been quite formative to my experience what type of student thrives at Yale I think something that all Yaleys that I've met um kind of share and have in common is that they can talk deep or like carry a conversation for a long time. Um, something that's unique to Yale, I think, is um, meal cultures, like grabbing a meal with a friend in the dining hall. And usually those meals like last an hour. So they can all carry conversations for at least an hour, if not more. And I don't know, Yaleys just like talk and think really deeply about things and a variety of things too. So that's something that I've noticed about a lot of students at Yale. Mm, is there student government? Yes, there is student government. There's the YCC, Yale College Council. Um, they have done some amazing work this past year. Um, they help push forward like universal pass during this quarantine time. Outside of that, they have implemented like um, a shuttle system that goes specifically from residential college to residential college at night, which has been so, um, so awesome to use. They've also like implemented like um, checking out like LSAT and GRE books um, from the library, making that process really, really easy and free. Um, just small little things like um, umbrellas, free umbrellas, free tote bags. Um, and yeah, and as outside of the YCC, there's also student government at Yale, like each residential college. So like Styles, for example, has like a student committee. There's also a housing committee, just a ton of different like student governments that you can get involved with. Do I take a bike to class? No, um, I take a scooter. I have a scooter, but actually most people just like walk because Yale's campus is not that big. You can walk probably from one end to the other end in 20 minutes if you're like a fast walker, which is like really nice for me. And and like, you don't have to walk either. There are also residential shuttles or sorry, the, the shuttle system that can take you around, um, especially when you need to go up Science Hill that can come in very handy, but most people walk. I just, I just like to scooter because it's cool. <laughs> How is the weather like at Yale? <laughs> um, it's shockingly hot once you get there in, in the beginning of the summer. Um, I like died from heat, uh, <laughs> um, especially cause like our rooms don't have like air conditioning, only heaters. Uh, but then it like turns cold pretty quickly. So I would say like one really, really thick cloak coat is what you need. Um, what, get one of those like puffy coats, like a parka almost, um, make sure it covers like your knees um, just so that your, your legs don't get cold. 
Um, that's pretty much after after like a really good coat, like honestly, you can you can choose to layer up on the inside, but I didn't find that super necessary. All I knew was coat. What are the professor and student relationships like? Is there a close knit community? I think this depends on what type of classes that you are taking. So for me, I would say the answer is yes, because a lot of the classes I'm taking are seminar style. So like I said, like they can range from six people to maximum 20 people. And this semester, guys, I'm in a two person class seminar. So it's me, one other student and our professor. And I am like so, so glad that I found this class through shopping period um, because obviously like I have a great relationship with that professor but even in my slightly like larger classes like it hasn't been hard to establish a relationship with them i just go up to them after class and and chat with them a bit make sure i pop into their office hours like invite them to my shows like my professors are amazing and they come out to support my shows which is just really heartwarming to me so i would say it's pretty close on my end Are there clubs for study of foreign languages? Yes. So I do know like a few um, language departments will do like tables. So they're just like a day of the week at a certain residential college. Um, they just like reserve a table and you're only allowed to talk in that language um, at that table for that like lunch time or dinner time or whatever. Um, yeah. And that's what I know for like language study in terms of taking like language classes. Okay, I took Chinese for like three semesters and it was hard because Chinese is a hard language. But honestly, like those professors are the sweetest. They're just, I mean, like Asian moms, like Chinese moms, and they would just like totally mom us and like bring us food and bring us mooncakes. And it just, it just made me feel like home. So I really enjoyed my time studying um, Chinese at Yale, even though it was so hard. Um, Yes, there are no air conditionings in the room. What I mean by that is like there really is only a heater because it's only you're only there in the heat for a little while. So just like bear with it. And then you turn on your heater when it gets super cold. Um, can you study your, abroad your freshman year? You know what? I don't think so. I don't think I've I've encountered someone who's done that. Um, yeah, I think there it either might be like a requirement that you stay like on campus your freshman year, um, but mostly like why would you want to leave, I guess, freshman year? Because you just got to a new place and you want to like establish, you know, a sense of, of normality, um, find your space, find your community. So I, I would say like, no, um, people don't really study abroad their freshman year. Sophomore year and junior year is a different story. People do go study abroad sophomore year, but generally study abroad is most popular in junior year, like me. I studied abroad last semester in um, Amsterdam. Thoughts on the buttery food? Um, amazing but the reason why i say that hesitantly is because <laughs> it's definitely kind of unhealthy like these so butteries are essentially um every residential college has a buttery they are late night snack places um and they sell food at like really 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 cheap um prices like like less than a dollar things like that um and they're run by students so you, there's a lot of like opportunity for employment there. Um, they run from like 10 to like one o'clock every night. Um, so just really chill space to like hang out, do homework, but more likely like play games with friends or like, yeah, just like eat really unhealthy food. Just the reason why I say it's like, it's good food. It's just a, a lot of it is very unhealthy because these are college students experimenting with like the unhealthiest sort of foods like how, what can you do with like chicken nuggets and mozzarella and like cheese wraps and tortillas and fries and like mash them all together in like one giant like dish um so yeah those are the type of inventions people come up with um yep my favorite place on campus um ah oh. I think I will say like, I'll just say my tops, my top, my top number one place 
uh, on campus was my dorm room uh, and it has always been like all three semesters. I, I tend to like study more in my dorm room. Um, and I also like, if you look online, um, you can you can just search up like my dorm room or whatever. It, it's, I, I like to decorate them. Like I spend a good chunk of my summer thinking about how I'm going to decorate my dorm room. Um, so they end up being very cozy places. And like, I love having friends over. Um, other places that I love, um, the Styles Library specifically. Each residential college has its own library. Our library is really gorgeous, um, really, really like underutilized, I feel. I, I don't like to be in like crowded libraries, so that's like the perfect spot for me. Uh, and then probably finally, like the last place, it's um, a place we call the Mouse, the, the Ministry House, so one of the Christian life like groups um, we own like a house and like in this house, there's like a really cute kitchen, a really like really nice study area, couches, TV, um, foosball, like always, always snacks. <laughs> so I really love hanging out there. Would I recommend you to buy a mini fridge? So Yale does actually rent out mini fridges for students. Um, and our first year, our suite shared a mini fridge. And it's actually, I think it's a really good investment. And especially if you're like splitting it with like four other people, it's like not expensive at all. So I would, I would rent one. How close is Yale to New York? two hours away. Um, how frequently do students leave New York or New Haven to visit New York? I left like five times in one semester, which I don't know if, I don't know where everyone else stands. Cause I know some people who go like way more often than I do. And I know some people who like never leave campus. So it really depends like how much you love New York city. Um, and it's, it's so easy to get there. It's just $17 one way um, on a train from like New Haven all the way to like Grand Central. It's like one shot. Um, it's great. Best place to see a sunset on campus? Probably, and I haven't done this yet, but I would probably like go to some really high tower, like maybe the Stacks or like the Bell Tower, the Harkness Bell Tower. That, that'd probably be like phenomenal to watch a sunset. But in general, like I see, I see amazing sunsets all the time, just like walking on the street and like looking at those gorgeous colors, like silhouetted by these beautiful old gothic style buildings. It's just, it's just gorgeous. Um, where do Yale students like to study? Yes, libraries, dorms, gardens. Yeah, so quads, like each residential college has its own quad. Um, when it's bright and sunny out, people will just like go out there and like lay in the sun or like play spike ball um, and just like soak up, soak up sun, soak up knowledge. Um, Favorite place outside of campus? Yeah, again, I think that the mouse is kind of like off campus ish. So I would say that sports culture. This is, <laughs> I need to get into more of this. Um, but so there are, there are like the varsity sports and then there's like the intramural sports. Intramural sports are probably the ones that I have more experience in because they're lower level. Anyone can join. It's um, to it's between the residential colleges. So you play like broom ball or um, water polo or uh, table tennis or just like various different sports, bowling too. And then um, it's kind of like, like in Harry Potter, like which house like gets the most points, gets a little cup, a little trophy at the end. So that's intramural sports. Um, I know that community is quite strong. And then just going to see sporting show or not shows, uh, sporting events. Wow. Sporting events. Um, very popular. I know that hockey is really exciting to watch. Um, basketball, of course, football. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to wrap it up with this question. Should I have a job during college or is it too stressful? And my answer to that is, like it, it depends on what you need or what you want, right? A lot of people that I know do, are working jobs and a lot of people I know are not working jobs simply because they like don't have time for that in, our, in their schedule or that's not really their priority at the moment. Um, there are different ways of like making money, right? There are 
you can get involved in, for example, like the Yale admissions office, like I am doing now. Um, you can help plan bulldog days for next year um, and get paid for that. You can um, write blogs like I do. You can uh, work at various libraries. You can work in the dining halls. Um, you can also do research and be get paid for, for research as, as part of different labs. Um, and then outside of Yale, there are also, oh, I'm also forgetting, you can be a peer liaison for various cultural houses. Um, that just means you're like paid to take care of like 40 different kids and organize like different events for them. For example, one of my friends is a peer liaison for the Asian American Cultural Center and they like, uh, she organizes just so many events to welcome in these um, Asian American frosh um, and then like gets one one-to-one uh, -one meals with them um, just acts like as an older sister to them and that's that's a paid job um, being a froco your room and board uh, uh, froco is a first year counselor your room and board is paid um, and yeah, what else? What other jobs? Off campus, people work in like the little boutiques that um, populate Yale's campus. People work in coffee shops. Um, yeah, honestly, a wide variety of things. Um, but that is it for me today. Thank you all so much for tuning in and leaving your awesome, awesome questions. Um, I will end this stream, but I believe this video should save. So you can always refer back to this. and. Maybe, maybe if you have more questions, just leave them and maybe we'll do another one. Who knows? But yeah, that's it for me today. Um, make sure you follow my Yale blogs, like my blogs on the admission site gives a lot of insight into what life at Yale is like. So please go and read those and subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys next time. Bye.